You have to use a shop back to clean it out. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. You have some digestive problems, bro. <laughs> Had to use a shop back to get it out, huh? Uh huh. <laughs> Welcome to the Buckmore Podcast. I am Martel, and with me always is Rambo. Rambo? D. Rambody. 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 That's my Cambodian name. Yeah. And we have a guest today. We do. A very special guest. We are place. actually on location someplace else. We, we are, are at my second home. Planet it feels Fitness. much cooler in here than we it are, does in your sauna office. I know. We're at Planet Fitness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Everybody's a wiener here. I hate Planet Don't Fitness. Don't drop barbells. Don't no even scream. pick them up. No Don't grunting. Grunt. Don't sneeze. Don't sneeze. Don't lift weights. Eat pizza and eat the candy out of the candy dish. And brownies. I, my favorite video on the plane of fitness was some guy, another member was yelling at a guy because he was breathing too heavy. Like when he went to bench press, he would exhale, and it was mm. frustrating to her. <gasps> well, you're not, not supposed even grunting. To... He was just like, the, like, oh. like just exhaling. Like when you lift weights, you're just not supposed to breathe anyway. Yeah, well, that's fine wow. if you're lifting two pounds. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> got this dude in their bench press like 400 pounds, he might like make a, a slight noise. We are at True Fit Athletics, woo woo, CrossFit TFA, and that other voice you hear is Coach Jimmy Barnes. What up? Welcome, Otherwise Jimmy Barnes. Known as Jamuel. 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 Jamuel Barnes. Yeah, that's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. You're welcome. Well, Coach <laughs> Slim. From now on. I'm that's what I've been calling name. you behind your back for years. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jamuel. Yeah, what is going on, Jimmy? Not a lot, not a lot. I'm excited nice. to be here. I'm glad you're here. Big fan of the show. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Love you guys. Prove it. Name 14 episodes right now. I don't know the names of them. 14 out of the 30. <laughs> 14 out, out, of like the, the 30, out of the 35. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very excited to be back. I used to, when I lived closer and was skinnier, I used to come here and uh, work out. And well, you were a crop instructor. Yeah, Where do you live here. at now? Circleville. Oh, okay. I mean, my, I used to live about 10 minutes away. Now I'm mm. about 35-ish. And I work in Columbus now versus working in Lancaster. Gotcha. I used to live in Logan, work in Lancaster, so this was really convenient. I mean, all I'm hearing is but, excuses, but that's just Oh, me. absolutely. Right. I've got them yeah. for days. I mean, I live, time we have? I live 25 minutes away, and I work I in Easton. I still manage to get now. here. It's really right. hard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's really easy for me to get here. I mean, I got, I've, I've got, <laughs> drive. <laughs> I got two kids, too. I mean, one's got a wiggly tooth. Uh-oh. I'll knock it out. I mean, Let's it's, it's I just so. I got a we'll tie a string. It's so difficult for me to get tie here now. Tie to a door. Let it, well, I love my kids, though. You just lock yours in cages when you leave. And <laughs> I used to. <laughs> you don't, they're older anymore. now. Now they just You're have to stay in the to room. Lock kids in cages? No, you yeah. can't. Yours is still young enough. You're yeah, fine. yours is. You're fine. You're you still going anywhere. I mean, he's only. He'll be four months. I usually just leave him at home anyway. So yeah, he can't go anywhere. He can't right. go anywhere. It's fine. on a fresh diaper before you go. You're good for about seven, eight hours. Exactly. Yeah, it'll fill up. You get home. Yeah, you'll be fine. Shit up the back. Exactly. You're fine. We had, we, our, and you just yeah. spray them off with the hose, and then they're clean. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. No big deal. It's one of those sprayers from kitchen sink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you got parenting done already, man. Four months Dude, in, you got four, it. Yeah. That's all it is. YouTube. You know? That's all you <laughs> Kid popped out all of a sudden. He's in, he's in the delivery room. His wife and kids sleep. He's on Google. Like, how, how do I how dad? How to dad. Dadding made easy. <laughs> Oh man! So what are we what are we doing? What are we drinking here? Well, today, so something. so I did. I poured you some smooth ambler contradiction. That I love the name. All it of that smooth, smooth ambler. Smooth ambler. That's the distillery contradiction. Which reminds me of a gambler and a rambler. Yep. And a backbiter. Backbiter. Sooner or later, God will catch you. That's a <laughs> Johnny Cash reference. No. Okay. Wow. I'm I'm, I'm out on that one. <sighs> All right. So. I had to grab the bottle. So uh, where did you get this bottle of whiskey at? So I picked this up. This is a straight bourbon whiskey from Smooth Ember. I actually picked this up when I was down <laughs> in Kentucky. Out. You passed out. Martell just grabbed it and ran. <laughs> yeah, it was a guy down. Uh, he was down by Bootsies. Um, I picked this up while I was down in Kentucky before it was available here in Ohio, and now I'm seeing it here in Ohio. Hmm. Okay. Um, so how long have you had this bottle? A while? Uh, maybe a year. Oh, okay. Dang. I sip on it. 
I mean, it's one of the 30. <laughs> Jimmy's like, that bottle's lasted a year. <laughs> well, it's easy when you have 80 bottles at That's home. That's true. I was going to say. And you're continually restocking. Yeah. Well, and I'm actually going down to Kentucky tomorrow <laughs> to buy more. Jeez. Did you ever find anybody to get you uh, the Japan whiskey? Not Maybe. What was your one from Japan? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. This is what maybe. I deal with. Maybe. Yeah, um, you got called out on some of your slurs and mess ups during the last episode. I know. I one of our biggest it. fans was like, Martel was so wrong, I turned it off. I'll try to listen later. <laughs> I'll fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Um, That's like I my was favorite drunk. part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> when, when Martel's like totally wrong, and then he's like, wait a second. I don't, well, not, I don't not that, just like the slurring and the. Oh, the yeah. messing up the words is great. I love yeah, it. I, I, I have head problems. <laughs> <laughs> and back problems. And back problems. That's why you were standing erect right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I'm standing right it's now because I can't sit He's down. very erect. Just it's erect weird. right in front of us. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> 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 Audio right, show with visual, the, right. visuals. Um, so Hi, Mom. This is, it's, it's 100 proof. Oh, It's got okay. an elephant standing on a barrel, just for the description. sweet. So it's that's a cool looking bottle. It is a very cool looking very bottle. Fancy. This is batch number eighty three. It was bottled by Ashton. I have, I, I, I guess, <laughs> I don't know who Ashton is. He does so many great things. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he was in that's acting. Awesome. Now he, he's real big in the uh, getting kids out of sex trafficking and making bourbon. Yeah. And you know. oh, well, I, Kim Kardashian's really good at getting people out of jail too. So, oh yeah, I don't even know anything about that. Gosh. Back to the bourbon. Back I don't to the want, bourbon. I, Kardashians do not need to be mentioned on our show ever. ever. Okay, in I'll just. Going. Not edit show. that part out. Um, <laughs> so this is a weeded, distilled, and aged in West Virginia. So it's a West Virginia bourbon. Um, not a Kentucky bourbon. It's not a Kentucky bourbon. Wow. So West Virginia right. we're, we're bourbon that. brewed or made in – you don't brew. No, you, just, see, do you? you distill. <laughs> you distill. Brewed. So this is – and no, it's, it was it's a bought blend. in Kentucky. Yeah, it, it's a. He bought it there. But I bought it, was it made there. in West Virginia. So it, it's a blend of West Virginia and Indiana, expertly blended. So they just sell it in between. Yeah, right in Kentucky. So interesting. Have a sip. All right, I'd we'll upload a picture of us to our Facebook. I like the smell. I start with the smell. Oh, on the nose, it's really good. I'm not wow. going to go through all the tasting notes and everything. That's a. That's, we have a lot to do today. Pretty good. Yeah, it's that's. It's not as smooth as the. Uh, what was the other hundred proof we did? The Virgil Cane. Yeah, I think time. so. It's not as smooth, but that is really good. It's yeah, it's got a really nice finish. flavor. Yeah. I should have eaten breakfast this morning. This is you your know, breakfast. Now it's lunchtime, and this is your breakfast. One shot, <laughs> and I'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got four to do. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't have to. Why is Jim? I only brought two. (laughs) Jimmy's on the floor. (laughs) His pants are off already. That's not bad. It just got weird in here. Mm -hmm. Well, Martel's erect. Yeah, Jimmy's on the floor. Pants are off. Mm, I've been sick and I haven't eaten. This is going to get ugly fast. (laughs) I mean, you poured me like the littlest sniff of bourbon in a cup I've ever seen, and I'm going to watch it like turn me inside out. I know. I'm willing to share. Um, No, you're good. (laughs) You do you. (laughs) You, We we poured our, Martel poured our guest a healthy, healthy Well, I at least the quad shot. I I over poured because I felt bad because I felt like I under poured, and then. (laughs) He just turned the bottle upside down and just let it go. Glug, 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 glug. So what's the price point on this? I don't remember. Google it, man. Let no, me. just go to Giant Eagle or Kroger and find out. It's no, probably our, our friends want to know. Our listeners no, they don't. Want, yes, it's they probably do. it's. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess forty two ninety nine. Say forty dollars. Okay, so we're saying around forty forty two. Yeah, I'm gonna say like forty two ninety nine. Now I'm looking up online, so it could. Uh, well, a higher price is gonna differ than online price. Right. That's what I'm so, saying. So. Thirty nine ninety nine in Ohio and seventy dollars online. Bingo! Whoa. You said forty thirty nine ninety nine. What do I win? Uh, more bourbon. Yeah. yeah, you get to drink some more. All right. Yeah, so for forty bucks, I, I would say this is priced very fair. Yeah, especially for being a high octane, hundred octane there. Um, how many donuts you giving it there? We we rate everything donuts, as you know. Yeah, Jimmy. This is. What do you think? Hmm. Now we don't know your benchmark. You're not just a bourbon guy are you like we prefer more bourbon you're kind of a what do you prefer um alcohol <laughs> <laughs> all right so so our listeners know jimmy's rating his out of just alcohol right uh, compared to well, other alcohol. i've had um, many bottom shelf whiskeys 
Right, as have and I. I've had a few medium shelf, if that's what you call it, <laughs> whiskeys. I, uh, I brought in that, that really nice bottle what, of what, scotch that one day. Oh, yeah. Scotch, Campfire. scotch, scotch. The stuff that smelled like a Band-Aid tin. And it tasted <laughs> like you chewed on a campfire. Yeah. yeah. Ew. It was awful. But it was really good, like, scotch. Yeah, it was like one of the higher ends. But yeah. It's yeah. like $60 a so bottle. Some of the, yeah, some of the high-end stuff, I've tasted it, and I just go, eh. Like, I'd rather buy just imagine, Heaven Seal for twelve ninety nine. you know? Just imagine the campfire smoldering out. Right, the and ashes. You, you take you the, the ashes, and charcoal. you grind it up, and you take a shot of that. Yeah. I mean, I forage with charcoal, so I've inhaled a bunch of that. It's not good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, how many donuts you given this then? What's our scale? One, one to five. five. One, one to five. five. Yeah, mm. and you can do half donuts. Well, I would have to give this one like a four. Nice. No, very right. good. Very good. Now, take that as you want. I drink a lot of low shelves. That's no, that's fine. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's we, fine. We look for people's opinions. We're not yeah. here to. <laughs> we're not professionals in the game. Right. Like, <laughs> nobody's going to write a blog about you and how I'm wrong just, you are. Right. Although, if they do, hey, that just that's more notoriety for us. Although they might talk shit about you on the car form like they do me. So right. that was only that one time. No, you haven't been mentioned since. I'm sure you're not I, that popular. Someone said they turned off the show and they'd go back and listen oh, to it. That, Who was no, that? that was that was sent to me via Facebook Messenger. Oh. That was Greg. <laughs> <laughs> so what, how many? Oh, and I'm friends with him by the way too on Facebook now. Good. And he's he's, tell, he's talking shit about me to you. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Say it to my no, face, Greg. Technically, he said Facebook. he was almost to his destination, so he turned it off. Uh-huh. But you were very wrong about. Apparently, I haven't listened back, but apparently, you at one point accidentally said bourbon's only made in Kentucky instead no. of Kentucky bourbon. Wow. Is different than. Well, the- so I think it was a slip up in your drunkenness last time. <laughs> But I was like, yeah, Martell knows, like, we've even had bourbons from other places on our show. We know it's not only made in Kentucky. Wah, wah, wah. wah, wah. How many donuts are you giving this? I'm, I give this one, I like this one. I'm going to give this one, like, three and a half. I give this one a good three and a half. I'm with you on that. I, I say three and a half on this one. Yeah. I like the Virgil Cane's much better than this. I mean, not, like, drastically. Well, this is a weeded, like so four, this, four is, right, this is a weeded the, bourbon. This right. is different than what the Virgil Cane's are, so. They're right. This no, they're they're corn. corn we had corn, we had corn. Um, with this being a weeded, putting this up against the Weller, this is right on par with Weller. So I would put Weller over this for two reasons. I would put Weller like quarter of a point over this. So like Weller's I like, like Weller, three seven five. If I give this a three and a half, I'd give Weller a four, um, simply because Weller's you get fifteen to eighteen bucks cheaper. Yeah, you can oh, get yeah. the hundred and seven proof, which I think is smoother than this at a hundred proof. Well, that now the Weller's Reserve, which is eighty proof, is way smoother. Right, and that depends on which Weller we're talking about here. So, but that's what I'm saying. Even the, the green label versus red label. Yeah, the red label, I think it's smoother than this. So I would put yes. this just under Weller's. I put it in between a bottle. In between the two. That's fair. So I give it three and a half. Okay, I'm yeah. with you on this. So I put, three, I and put three and a half, and, and Jamuel gives it four. Okay. Jamuel, nice. All right. What kind of donuts are we talking about? The uh, kind of you want it's your your choice. We, we picture the Simpsons donut, the pink eye scene. Okay. With the sprinkles, sprinkles and on very cartoony illustration y looking. Yeah. Right on. I can dig that. Yeah, that's not bad. No, it's very good. Very, very good. Yeah, so uh, really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, give me more. Yeah. Well, you still got good, uh, <laughs> yeah, you good half an ounce in there. Yeah, you, pour, you covered the bottom of mine yours glass. You pour, <laughs> you covered the bottom of his and went a little, a little more. A little more. Let's loosen Jimmy just, up for just this. A, just about another couple seven ounces. Um, okay, so before we move on to the next one, let's uh, let's hit our topic today. So we have yes. two topics that we'd like to hit today, um, if, we can. if we can, and we'll see if we can hit them both. So the first one we're going to hit is Hawaii, one of Hawaii. the last states to hit the Union. And they're doing something very special over there on that little island. They are banning smoking. Well, but they're they're, doing, talk, they're proposing the ban on smoking, which I on tobacco. Think that they've looked into it and decided not to do it. Really, I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen anything more on I their proposal. That it would be way too difficult to to go through with it. Yeah. So they decided to scrap the whole thing. I think. Okay. And here's what brought this up. And we've been talking about having Jimmy and even Brandon, uh, Jimmy's partner in crime here at True Fit Athletics in Lancaster, Ohio, on South Ewing Street. Look him up. Yeah. And um, stop by, stop come by. in. Seven-day trial for free. Ooh. Ooh. What, what if you did a special promo just for our listeners? Mm. Something extra. Yeah. Think about it. Um, but no, this, this if, if you're looking at I'm doing a plug. We weren't even playing on it. 
this gym for what you get for the price with professional trainers whose certificates you can see in the lobby of what they know and what they do. The equipment here, the camaraderie here, you cannot beat it. If you are looking for a gym and you think Planet Fitness is a good deal because it's like five bucks and you get to eat pizza, look at the people in Planet Fitness. I walked in today after being out of here for four years because I got, I got really fat again. And yeah, you did. I'm working on that. It's going really well. I'm getting fatter, so I'm doing well at it. <laughs> but I walked in, and I was like, even the, like, quote, unquote, out of shape people here are in way better shape than me. Like, this place is legit. But um, th- we would want to have him on, and then he posted something about the ban on cigarettes mm-hmm. in Hawaii. And he said, I would be all for this. I would vote for this ban. And I replied, you know, like, I want it. And, and it was just too much to type. But I was like, we should talk about this because I, I actually did. I went to a Christian college in an adult degree program. And one of our topics for my English class was you had to pick an argumentative essay. So you had to pick a controversial topic and try to persuade somebody else on your point. And one that I picked was, I actually just titled it, Please Keep Smoking. Mm. Now, I started smoking. I had my first Swisher Sweet Cigar at 11 years old Dang. in the park at Sylvan. It's a neighborhood in Circleville. Uh, I thought I was awesome. Mm-hmm. I did not know that you were not supposed to inhale Swisher Sweets. Now that I'm an adult, I realize you should never even buy Swisher Sweets. <laughs> <laughs> no. But uh, I had my first cigarette, I think, at 15, 14, something like that. 14 or 15, I had my first cigarette, and all the cool kids were I hung out with a lot of older kids. Uh, we had a, a kid named Tom that ran around with us, and at 15, he had a full beard. So he could just walk in back. You know, it's the mid-90s. He can just walk in buy cigarettes. Nobody carded him. Uh, somebody carded me and say, oh, they're for grandma. She's at home and can't get out. Okay. And it's, you know, it's back in the day. Yeah. Uh, so we'd get a few packs, and I was smoking. By the time I was in college, I was either smoking a pack of Black and Milds or a pack of Marlboros or Marlboro Lights a day. Uh, I smoked from up until 25. I'd already rededicated my life to Christ, became a youth pastor, still struggled with smoking. Uh, to people that try to quit smoking now, I try to encourage them and tell them, tell them you know, I, I quit 47 times. Mm-hmm. Before it stuck, it, right. it, it was. I'd quit for almost a year, went on vacation, grabbed a pack on vacation, and the next thing I know, I'm back to a pack a day. So, um, <clears throat> it's something I've struggled with. I've lost uh, family members mm-hmm. due to cancer from smoking. Beth, my wife, has had a bunch of her family members have either done um, chew or dip or smoke cigarettes. And the first time when we were dating, uh, I went to meet one of her grandmas in a nursing home, and she had no nose. That had to be removed due to wow. problems from smoking for so many years. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely something I can say that I can speak on with, with experience. Uh, having been addicted to nicotine and been around uh, and lost folks, you know, mm-hmm. that, or, or been around people that are greatly affected. Um, so I just posted, you know, I, I think all I said on your post was I wouldn't vote to ban it. Right. Now, I expected a bunch of other people to, like, jump on it, like, usually oh, no. have on Facebook. I but totally it was pretty knew chill. it was going to be, like... Completely opposite. I, I knew people weren't going to agree with me on that, and that's cool. And people are allowed to, you know. And I'm, I'm, for me, and I think I even posted it on that status. For me, it's not. It has nothing to do with um, tobacco in general. Um, for me, it's more of a selfish thing. Okay. You know. Um, you know it's I've nice lost, that you, you acknowledge that and admit it, though. Yeah. Because most it, people and, don't. You know, it, for me, it's just I hate it. I've lost a lot of people to to it. Uh, I see what it does to people as far as addiction um, yeah. and that kind of stuff. And I mean, <clears throat> I've even seen, I've even heard stories. I haven't actually seen it, but I've heard stories of people putting it over like everything, you know, it, it almost becomes like it, like, well, I can, I can back you up on that. Statistically cigarettes uh, in general, but tobacco and nicotine is statistically harder to quit than methadone, mm-hmm. than cocaine, than heroin. And a bunch of people may listen to this and say, oh, bull crap, or oh, blah, blah, or it's not, you know, it's not that big mm-hmm. of a drug. My aunt and uncle run three recovery houses that help people who are coming out of jail or coming off drugs get clean. They employ them um, where they do, uh, they, they have a thing called Como Restoration, where they do restoration work, power washing, construction. But they get these people clean. And I've mm-hmm. seen people who have done, uh, some guys I grew up with, fell into heroin and cocaine. Yeah. And they came in there, and they said, okay, we need to quit everything. They're like, no, don't quit your cigarettes. 
that that's going to be too hard. <laughs> like yeah. you know, um, but they've done the research and they have had professionals come and help them. Like like they're in it. They're living mm-hmm. it. This is what they do for a living: is help people get clean yeah. off of alcohol, off of narcotics, and everything. The one thing they tell people is do not quit smoking cigarettes. It's harder and more addictive yeah. to quit. And usually once you have an addiction, I mean, you have to have something to replace it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. And, and I've known people that have smoked for years who have quit but then became addicted to things like soda. You know what I mean? Well, which it, is totally that's random, what happened to but, me. When yeah. I was coming here, I was, uh, when I was teaching here, I got down. I went from 421 pounds down to 268 back in 2010 and 11. Um, I did that just by eating right and moving. Mm-hmm. There wasn't any crash course diet or nothing, but it, it, and I had when at twenty five I quit smoking. Well, I went to the e cigs back before vaping was a thing. They only had the little, mm-hmm. you know, cigarette shaped <laughs> ones you could get. And I would do that on the way here, teach a class, go home. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd be doing that nonstop. Well, through the night I would smoke this e cig in my cabin. Um, sometimes I was smoking in my office at the church because it doesn't. There's no aroma, right. no odor. It doesn't harm anybody Vaporizes. else, right? And uh, it wasn't something I did to look cool. It's something I usually did behind closed doors. And it wasn't that I was ashamed I did it. I let other people know I did it. But uh, it was replacing that, that habit. Mm-hmm. And when I quit that, just due to cost and, you know, I had a kid and all this. Well, then I started finding myself snacking more and more. And now here I am. Oh, yeah. And at the end of last year, I went, oh, crap, what have I done to myself? Yeah. Now I'm back in the worst shape I've ever been in. Where I was a crowd Maga instructor, teaching two, three classes a week, working out going on hikes. Mm-hmm. Now I'm back to where I was. So you're, you're right. It's definitely when, when people quit whatever addiction they have, they, they replace it with something. And they say that the smoking addiction is mainly just like it's a habitual thing. Like um, people become addicted to the process of smoking. You know, something yeah. in your hand, you know, and, and it's something to pass the time for a lot of people. Um, I had a friend, uh, his mom, uh, actually went and got hypnotized. To oh, yeah. Quit smoking. Did you it work? I mean? uh, kind of. So it worked for a little while. I'll say that. But then I've she heard became, mixed results on it. Yeah, she became extremely addicted to seltzer water. Seltzer water? Like the carbonated yeah. water and the flavored water. And like the La, La Crocs? Yeah. That the LA Crocs water? She would buy just like 30 cases at a time. Holy crap. How long would that and, last? Uh, not very long. Two days. Yeah, <laughs> literally like a week. So she was just doing seltzer water, like, nonstop. That's oh, the yeah. only thing she was probably it drinking. It was basically, like, one one can would be like a cigarette. You know what I mean? Wow. And it worked for a little while, but then, I don't know, she she's, she went back to smoking eventually. Yeah. You know? But, um, but yeah. So, um, <clears throat> for me, it, it, like, I, like I mentioned before, it's not, like... And, and, and I, I do want to be clear about the fact that it's not necessarily tobacco that I'm, a, that I'm against. You know what I mean? Because um, it's more about the smoke, smoking, you know, in general. And, and that goes for all things. I know that, you know, uh, marijuana right now is a big thing that they're trying to legalize. And, and I, I'm against legalizing smoking marijuana. You know what okay. I mean? But I Even think, medicinally? You think they should smoking. have, like, the oils or exactly. the edibles? Yeah. Okay. Because I think it That's doesn't fair. matter what it is. It, it could be, I mean, it could be a campfire. <laughs> I mean, it could be a cigarette. It could be a joint. It could be yeah. anything. But if you put that smoke into your lungs, it becomes carcinogenic. Now, what about the vaporization of something like that, turning it into, like, a water vapor? You're talking about Like vapor. the, <laughs> right, the, the marijuana oil or the nicotine? Yeah. Now, see, that, here's the thing because, with that. When you, because with the, with the Hawaii ban... Vaping is not included mm. in that ban, but it's just as bad. I don't for know your much lungs. about vaping. Right. Well, 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 then that's the thing. So vaping when, is basically it's just turning it into right. You're still a, a steam You're of not, some the kind. Thing, the 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 only which I upside hate. that I know of for vaping or e cigs or whatever you want to call it is the secondary effects. It doesn't yeah. affect other people as much. Right. It's still now that you know when I first started doing it, they were like. Oh, it's like you're walking through a mist. You're inhaling vapor. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, that's healthy. I mean, healthier right. than cigarettes. Well, once I quit, it was right around the time people started saying, oh, there's this thing called popcorn lung. There's this thing called, you know, like yeah. now we're finding out that people have been doing it for a few years. We're starting to see the results of Effects that. Effects of that, too. So. And I heard one jewel pod is like the equivalent of like 
Just eating a Tide Pod. <laughs> like an Smoking ungodly amount pod. of nicotine. Like yeah, it, well, and here, here's my problem with my e-cig. Like I said, now when I smoked, I smoked for about 10 years. I If I smoked in my car, it could be dead middle of winter. Could be a polar vortex going on. If it mm. was so cold, I could not roll down my windows. I just want to smoke because I hated mm. getting in somebody's car and it smelled like a wet ashtray. I hated walking to somebody's house and just smelling mm. like you're at a dirty, dingy dive bar. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I did. So when I smoked, me and me and a buddy lived together. He dipped and I smoked. Well, he dipped and leave spit bottles everywhere. Well, that ticked me off, so he started cleaning them up. Mm. But my negotiation... But he should have been cleaning them up in the first place. Right, he should have. Well, <laughs> yeah. we were all young and dumb, and he was young and really, really, really dumb. But <laughs> I, uh, when I went to smoke, I got on the porch. It just it, it, That yeah. was my rule for me and my place. I didn't want any... It, when people came over, like I had one buddy, he'd, he chain-smoked. Mm-hmm. We'd go to his apartment, he smoked inside, he'd say, smoke inside. Well, I would, and he'd walk out smelling like an ashtray. Yeah. But when he came to our place, No. Mm-hmm. Get out on the. We got a covered porch. Put on your jacket if it's cold. You yep. know, you do that outside. It's just that was just our rule. So, um, the the secondary effects of the vaping, you don't get that. So I was actually mm-hmm. doing the e cig smoking, or if you want to call it vaping, that's fine. Way more than I was smoking. It, it it didn't start that way. But then every time I was in my car, I, I actually ended up with two. So as I'm smoking one, I'd have another one on the charger ready to go. Mm. Do you think that's like a psychological thing? Too? I think so. Because everybody had promoted it as being healthier than cigarettes? Yeah. Partly. I, I think it partly is. I think the other part is, like you said, I was looking for something to replace that oral fixation and that addiction. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to eat more because this was when I was like really, really into fitness. Watch what you eat. I was working on the mm. farm with Sean, you know, growing, raising our own meat, growing our own veggies and, and fruit and everything. So I was really cautious about that. So I didn't want to eat more because mm. I was afraid of getting fat again, which is kind of ironic sitting here today <laughs> in the old gym I used to teach at. But um, so for me, it was part psychological because even, even Beth, she said, I would rather you do that than mm. smoke. She hated smoking, yeah. hated it. Um, and she said, you know, that I would rather you do that than smoke. Well, then right. it became a money thing because now I'm doing it in my office, in my car, in the cabin, anywhere yeah. I went. Mm. So I'm doing it more. And it just became to where I needed that that fixation more. So I think I was more addicted to the nicotine yeah. doing the e-cig. So it wasn't any better. Um, as for the Hawaii ban, and the reason I said I want to do this, I'm I'm with you as, as far as how I've been affected. Mm. And now having two kids, I definitely don't want my kids around mm. c- cigarette smoke. Now, I still occasionally smoke a pipe, mm-hmm. tobacco pipe. <laughs> uh, every time I crack say pipe. I smoke a pipe, you were like, oh, you smoke weed? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, crack pipe. <laughs> it's healthy. Yeah. Um, well, all all wise men smoke pipes, right? Well, I have a beard. Once well, I grew a beard, it just yeah. showed up on my porch. Like, here's your pipe. <laughs> so, is that the but secret to growing a beard? I think it is. Hmm. Pipes and, and whiskey. See, that's funny because my pipe showed up too when I had a beard, Did, and then it go. disappeared when I shaved. I was like, <laughs> shit, it's Does gone. It just show up when <laughs> you the have beard, a beard. Yeah, it's like my <laughs> beard got down to <laughs> right. It just vanishes. It, it like when my beard got down to my chest, I'm like. Oh pipe. shit! There's a pipe. There's a pipe. Where did that come from? And then when I, the day I shaved, I was like, I went to grab my pipe, and I was like, oh, it's, oh, it's gone. gone. Damn! See? That's what you get for shaving. I know. Um, well, no, but for me, here's the thing with the pipe, though. It, it's it, again, it's a process. So when you light a cigarette up, you you literally grab a pack. You can pack it on the way to the car. As soon as you get in the car, you pull it out and light it. Mm-hmm. Um, with a pipe, you have to pack it. If you pack it too loose, it doesn't burn well. If you pack it too tight, it doesn't light well. You know, there's a mm-hmm. process to it. And the more I I got into studying. Pipe smokers and all the past presidents that smoked pipes and historians and authors and all these people, um, and, and looking at what they had to say about it was like, you know what? It forces me to slow down. And these were people living hundreds of years ago yeah. in the world we live in. I was like, I need to relax. And I was still looking for the oral fixation. So I got off the East thing, bought a cheap pipe, bought some cheap tobacco, started learning how to smoke a pipe. Now, with that, I can easily say I don't do it around people that don't mm-hmm. smoke a pipe with me or don't tell me to. I definitely went around my kids. And it's not something I'm addicted to because I haven't smoked it since last summer because it's just too cold. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not smoking <laughs> in my place and I'm not going outside. Like, I, I don't need a pipe. Yeah. But it is something that when I'm around a campfire with friends, um, it's something that I enjoy. It, yeah. it, it, it's a process. It takes for, for you to properly pack a pipe and smoke it, a full bowl, you're looking at about a half hour process, mm-hmm. maybe longer, depending on the size of the pipe. You can get, obviously, you can do it differently. But it's not a quick five minute cigarette. Right. So for me, it was a much different. Uh, plus, most people smoke tobacco pipe. Like, oh, what's that? You know, it's not. Even though it's still smoke, they just yeah. seem to be okay with it because it smells like cherry, vanilla, 
Kool-Aid or whatever. Right. <laughs> you know, so. Um, but for me, I, I actually read this college paper I was talking about called Please Keep Smoking. Mm-hmm. And I did it at a Christian college. Now, this was back in 2007. Mm-hmm. So shortly after, I quit smoking. And I did a lot of research on um, tobacco companies. How much pollution do cigarettes cause, the factories cause, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Um, how much revenue do they bring in? How many uh, deaths are there per year mm-hmm. in different ages and socio uh, economical classes? Like I did four or five weeks worth of research on this. And in the end, I went, look, cigarettes suck. In the end, mm-hmm. they get you hooked and they make somebody else a lot of money and you die. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the research turned out that less kids died from secondhand smoke than kids died of some kind of organ failure or disease from eating too much fast food and candy. Right. Less people, less pollution happened from cigarette smoke and companies that made cigarettes. Like I looked at like Philip Morris and all these big companies, then auto producers and automobiles and the whole cow farting thing. That's been in the news lately, right? Because we have a senator now that says we wait, should. Wait, just... wait, 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 what? Oh yeah, oh, the cow back farting. on the the methane thing on from yeah. cow farts. <laughs> yeah, what's your face is saying we got to get rid of all cows by 2024 because the methane farts are killing the ozone and crap. Oh, really? No, I like cows. So, yeah, I was, I was like, steak. where's They're all so that tasty. steak going? <laughs> you can get rid of cows. Send them to me. Right. Yeah. Bring but, them all to Ohio. <laughs> most of them are in Ohio. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're, we're, <laughs> one step we're, closer. we're good then. But I looked at animals, you know, these big production mm. pig farms, cow farms, and all the methane they produce. And, you know, you got diesel tractors plowing through cornfields and all this. Yeah. In the amount of, li- I even looked at litter, cigarette butts. They drove me nuts when I was smoking to see cigarette butts mm-hmm. laying around. I don't know. I've just not. I've never liked litter. It still drives me insane. It's, yeah. When I was young, when I was like sixteen or seventeen, driving on my own, the windows were down. I finished drinking like Mountain Dew or something. I threw the can out. That bothered me to this day. I think about that can. <laughs> Is it dumb? Yeah, it's dumb. Some people don't care. I go down the road. Any you know any of these country roads we're all living around, you'll see three, four bags of trash. Somebody just pulled over. And- yeah. Threw out oh, and went on. I almost rear-ended someone the other day with Liz in the car because they just chucked a bag out the window. And I was, Liz, Liz <laughs> was like, are you kidding me? I was just like, <laughs> stomped on the gas. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, catching up. They need to know that they threw that bag out. <laughs> like my wife said, when I used to get mad at other people on the road, she's like, you're not a cop. Well, they need to know they did something wrong. She's like, why? Like, who are you? I was like, you're right. But, but still, they're wrong, you know. They're, yeah. But in looking at it, yeah, it's a spit. Now, when we were all growing up, you'd go to... Like DJ said in the previous episode, you go to restaurants smoking or not smoking, not smoking. Mm. Then you go sit in your not smoking, smell cigarettes, smoke the whole time. Yeah. Right. It's it's you know it's, so now that doesn't happen. Mm. You don't even go to a bar and smell smoke anymore. I mean, no, you just walk through them down, as they're standing right, outside patio area now. Right, most bars do. Yeah. Right, I mean it depends. But and again, my my argument then, and this was after I smoked, was people were like, well, if you go to a bar, this that or a restaurant, if you know they're smoking there and you don't like it, don't go. Right. I mean, that's a choice you make. If right. you go somewhere knowing that people are allowed to smoke there, you can't get mad that people are smoking there. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like going to a concert knowing it's going to be loud than complaining it's too loud. No, it's, it, you know, if Metallica's playing and you got seats in front of the speakers, don't complain about your eardrums getting bleeding. Mm-hmm. So that was my big thing. But in doing all the research, my biggest thing is if we totally ban tobacco, what's it really going to do? Because we tried banning booze. Oh, what did that do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I totally it's, understand the effects. It, yeah, so it, it would definitely be like a setback for many years to come. Well, here's my my happen. my biggest thing was the 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 uh, um, economy, the effect it would have on it. And I pulled. Up, I just got a couple quick points here that I I did. I couldn't find my paper. I think it's on my old laptop, my like term paper, because I was just going to hit some highlights. Um, but I found an old article. It was actually written in 2011, so the figures are from then. But in the year 2010, the federal Excise tax on cigarettes brought in fifteen point five billion in revenue. That money went to found the expansion of the federal state children's health insurance program. Oh, so they took fifteen point five billion federal tax dollars from cigarettes and helped kids get insurance. Mm-hmm. Uh, state level. Um, the what kind of message does that send, though? What kind of message does it send? Well, you think about it like kids are like, oh. Well, the tobacco companies helped us. Well, I don't think kids know that, but that's a good point. <laughs> I don't think kids growing up, like eight-year-olds, like, you know what? I hope everybody keeps smoking because it gives kids insurance. <laughs> like, most most kids that age are worried about Pokemon and whatever's right. happening at school. I'm worried well, with that, Pokemon. so before you, before you go on with that, so Hawaii's tax on cigarettes is the fifth highest in the nation at $3.20 per 
per pack. Okay, so I'm about to hit on states next. That's perfect. So that's the just lowest, the tax on right, on the the, on a pack on of cig- uh, yeah on a, on a pack of cigarettes. So the state tax again. This is back in 2010. Missouri had the lowest at 17 cents per pack. So if you want to smoke in Missouri, New York had the highest at 4.35 per pack. Again, back in 2010. Now I think right. it's like seven or eight dollars. Yeah, it's, it's um, that now. But the states raked in more than 24 billion dollars by tax of cigarettes and 8.8 billion in settlement payments from tobacco companies. Okay, so the state of Hawaii spent 6.6 million on t- tobacco prevention in 2018. What could that money have gone to? Could have went to a lot of things. A lot of things. Rather than trying to prevent somebody from smoking and making their own choice. But you just said that they spent $15 million on... No, no, I'm on, saying this is what they brought in. Right. The, I didn't say what the... The $15.5 billion was federal. That's not just the oh, state. Okay. That's gotcha, federal. Gotcha. Yeah, this so, is in Hawaii. I don't know how the state spent it because I, I didn't go through all 50 states. And but. then in, let's see, nearly 50% of the CDC's recommended spending total was $13.7 million according to TACO – or TACO. Ta- oh, tacos. Taco? Tacos, tacos sound good. Mm, according to <laughs> Tobacco Free Kids, which is a website. So that's how much they spend on – That's the CDC's recommended – to prevent to kids prevent. from smoking. Yes. Tobacco for kids. Yes. Yeah, I'm all for that. I don't want kids smoking. I think kids are too young. I think 18-year-olds are too young to join the military and decide what they want to do in college for the rest of their lives. Oh, no, that's a whole other discussion that you and right. I are going to have at some point. Oh, good. Okay. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, but looking through this, this dude actually got really, really savage. Uh, Hans Bader, Council for Special Products of the Competitive Enterprise Institute, cited a number of studies that pointed out, excuse me, my throat, I've been sick all week. In an admittedly macabre fashion, that smokers save taxpayers money. Uh, side note, if you've been sick all week, you need to reference a episode we did about the hot toddy and go back and have one. I've been making one each night go. this week. That's where this bourbon I brought came from because I got some just for hot toddies. <laughs> um, but he said they save taxpayers money by dying sooner and more quickly than the rest of the population. Oh, it's just morbid. It's, like That's I said, it's admittedly morbid. macabre. Right. Uh, smokers save the government money by dying earlier, thus reducing Social Security payments, and to a lesser extent, by dying <laughs> relatively cheap ailments like lung cancer, which is a fairly quick killer, rather than more expensive lingering ailments. That's it's kind of like horrible. putting somebody on dr- It is. But it's also factual. Yeah, it is. I, I get it. It's kind of like if, if somebody's sentenced to death, why do we pay for them to be on death row for 20 years? Why not uh, kill him next week? Yeah. We're we're all paying for that. Mm-hmm. Right. He's just kind of saying, you know, it, it's not cool, but the reality is mm-hmm. if they're in the hospital sick and they die quicker, it saves taxpayers money. Um, so my biggest thing, I guess, and I'm not going to read this whole article. Uh, we can link it, I guess. And then it sums it up, kind of sums up my thing. It says politicians don't want constituents and taxpayers to be mad at them, so they try to find small percentages of the population to go after. Smokers. Mm-hmm. Right now, well, back in 2010, they said about 20% of the population smoked. I guess that's much lower now with everybody vaping. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying um, to find it. I, I had it pulled up, and I lost it when I was searching for something else. The nationally smoking is down right. from 2005 to 2017, mm-hmm. about 20% overall. And then they have it broken down by gender, and then they also have it broken down by age. But I can't. I'm Ugh. searching for it now to try to. Um, so he's great. He said, Pull that yeah, up. I do too. They put non-users against users. It's very much a divide-and-conquer approach. So that's exactly saying what we're talking about. You're going to put mm-hmm. the people that are want to smoke against people that don't want it. Uh, so if the anti-tobacco campaigners get their way and turn America into a land without smokers, will never happen. It is possible that after the fiscal pinch is felt by America's elected officials, they may embrace their inner Joni Mitchell admitting, don't. It always seemed to go that you don't know what it's got till it's gone. <laughs> Earlier in the article, it actually alluded to the fact that if they lose that fifteen point five billion dollars, mm-hmm. they're going to find a way to get it. So we might start seeing taxes on things we do, like pop, meat, yeah. soda, 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 bourbon. <laughs> like, well, like they're going well, they're to already going to start money. taxing bourbon. Yeah. But that, you, you know, what I'm saying so. But my not thing with smoking is, and, and here's my number one biggest reason: I would not vote to ban smoking. I don't care what you do. Yeah. If you are smoking in your house, especially now, in, at least in Ohio, you can't smoke everywhere in public. You're not even supposed to smoke within 20 feet of a door, so most right. people don't get it. <clears throat> if you want to buy cigarettes and slowly kill yourself, it sucks. Um, 
I still got loved ones that do it. I hate it, but that's their choice. Oh, so I, get that. I don't want to see somebody's freedom or somebody's right banned mm-hmm. because if they can ban cigarettes like they once banned alcohol, which we all saw how that turned out. And if you've ever stu- actually studied prohibition, it was awful, and the more people died than anything. Yeah. Um, if they ban the cigarettes, that's one of those things. Kind of like, should they be able to take my rifle? Should they be able to tell me what kind of car mm-hmm. I can drive? Should they be able to tell me what I can do with land I own? You know, so it's it's one of those. For me, it's more about the freedom. Right. So one of the other things with this ban. So, Jimmy, <laughs> you had mentioned that they're thinking about just not doing this ban right. at this point any point a, anymore now. So in a, in a hypothetical situation, if they did try to pass this ban, the way that this ban would work, um, I can't find the article now, but what I had read was the way that they would implement this in, let's say, five years. Right now, someone who is 18, 21, whatever their, their legal age is, they can buy cigarettes now. Mm. And in five to ten years, they would up that to yeah, it's 30. Like every certain amount, they would up. They until would it's like up it until, years old. <laughs> yeah, until you're 100 years old. You can't buy cigarettes until you're you can. 100. Right. So, but again, that does the same thing. So it just – It's basically banning it. it, it that that is, that's putting a, that's they're putting trying a no to, guns allowed sign out of school. Well, they're trying to just mm. follow people as they age – those people as they age to get the people that are younger to not like, okay, here, smoking's bad. Don't smoke. Mm-hmm. But these people that are smoking now, they're just following them with that age as they're Here's smoking the thing, till they just, they're dead and they're not smoking Since anymore. Since the dawn of time and until the earth blows up or we all die or resurrection, whatever you believe happens, people have wanted to fit in. And right. People have always had addictions, mm-hmm. period. No, I no, I back get all in, that. Back I'm, in the sixties and seventies, people were tripping on LSD. They were tripping balls. Nowadays, I don't know anybody that does LSD. God, I wish I, I was one tripping dude balls that does right shrooms. now. One yeah. dude in my whole life that does shrooms, and he started within the last ten years. Still does shrooms. Yeah. Wow. Um, does does shrooms, and and he's not he's younger than me. Is the weird thing, but the kind of stuff that they were doing back then. Look back in the the peyote twenties. Yeah. Look in the forties. Kids were finding ways to sneak out and do things that were illegal or seemed immoral at the time. Right. right. The way they danced, the music they listened to, the um, the alcohol. They oh, that, That's why Prohibition came about. Right. You know, alcohol's going to be the ruin of this country, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then we Well, hear, no, that was marijuana. No, back then, uh, there, yeah, I mean, Prohibition well, was done because all and, the drunk guys and, you know, husbands can't be good, guys can't be good husbands and fathers. They're all a bunch of drunkards. <laughs> Oh, there's a few of them. That doesn't mean we're all. It's, it's the toxic masculinity thing. We're not all drunkards just because we have a sip of bourbon. I know. With no breakfast or lunch. Why are you yelling at me? I'm not. I'm yelling in general. <laughs> so you're looking right at me. You're the one standing in the room. <laughs> See, I'm looking at you because I'm yelling to you. Oh, okay. You, you're erect. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I am. You draw my attention. <laughs> yeah, I do. No, but my my thing is, they want to ban cigarettes and smoking. All it's going to do is cause people to find a way to do it illegally. If they want to smoke, they're going oh. to smoke. Well, yeah, I mean, and the prohibition. Look, we'll look at the the drug pop problem in the United States. I mean, heroin here is in legal. Lancaster. Just yeah, yeah just look Lancaster. here in Lancaster. Yeah. Really, any any city. I mean, mm-hmm. you're you're going to find that, and yeah, totally. People are going to find a way to do it. You mm-hmm. know, and I totally understand that. Like I said before, it was, for me to post that was more of a selfish thing. Right, I, and, I, and, I, and that, I'm with you, you on that. I mean? If I if I could if I had my choice, nobody would ever smoke tobacco. Yeah. And, and they just also, went, like it would have never been a thing. It's my profession too, right? You well, know, and, and health and fitness. Make sure people are that they're healthiest. You know what I mean? And I mean, there's people that come to our gym that still smoke. Yeah, and I but get they're that. Trying and to they, better but they come to me all the time, and they're like, "I just can't breathe. I don't know what's going on." And I'm like, <laughs> "I know what's going on." <laughs> you know, I know what exactly I mean? what the problem and, is. And yeah. So for me, it's like uh, it's very personal to you. Yeah, it, it's very. I mean, I lost my father to it. I lost mm-hmm. an aunt who was like a mother. You know, I lost a lot of people in my family. Very close to you. Yeah, and so for me, like, if I saw it on the ballot, and and trust me, like, I don't think there's any way it would ever go through. Right. There's just no way. Um, but, but you'd have to stay true to yourself and vote exactly. for it. Right. And yeah. I commend that. That see, yeah. I respect somebody that says this is why I'm doing it. Whether it's good, right, or bad, this is my feelings, my beliefs, and I'm going to stand by it. Then people, when I ask, why do you vote for that? Well, I just thought that was better. Oh, I just, I didn't know they were Logically, Republican or Democrat like or, yeah. I just, oh, I just voted no for this. Cause I'm like, See, well, don't vote then, you know, it's just, mm-hmm. I, I can always, my cousin voted for Trump. I said, okay, why? Because most people, when it first happened, most people I asked, they're like, oh, because he's going to build a wall and he's going <laughs> to blah, 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 and Hillary's a crook. And I'm like, well, I, you know, I don't like Hillary either. You're right, you know, but why do you vote for Trump? 
uh, uh, MAGA. I'm like, no, but like, why? Like, give me specific. I'm not mad at you. I'm just trying to understand. So I didn't vote for either of them. Um, and he told me, he said, I am a father of three and a husband. I am the sole income provider of our house and I own a business. Mm-hmm. This, this, and that, X, Y, Z, this is what the tax changes have done for me. This is what this has done for me, blah, blah. And I went, all right, good all on right. you. Mm, yeah. Makes perfect sense. It is working out for you. But when somebody tells me I voted for this person, that person, or this bill, or that bill, and has no reasoning. Because I want to Okay, do. that's your prerogative. But it's better yeah. for me, for somebody like you that goes, yo, I understand it's selfish, but I mm. still would like to see this not affect others the way mm. it has me. I don't want to see other people suffer. That I'm all for. Because like I said, it, it affected me. It affected my marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When Beth and I first started dating, we'd known each other since seventh grade. I asked her out on a Friday. She said yes. Come Monday, she dumped me by leaving a note in my English book. <laughs> and we didn't see each other all weekend either. Literally, the next time I saw her, she dumped me. Yeah. That's another story for another time. Stayed friends through high school. And then in college, we started hanging out just as friends, doing more things just as friends. And then we started dating. And it got more serious. And she said, you know, well, what are we? And I said, look, I'm all for dating. But two rules. Don't try and change me. You know, I don't... Mm-hmm. You either like me for I am or you don't, and I'm cool with that because at that point I was very used to it, and especially now. Some people just don't like me. <laughs> That's fine, but I'm going to be me. It's hard to believe. I'm right. But nobody's ever said I'm love fake. You. <laughs> it's because I'm fluffy again. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> and uh, the other rule was don't tell me you love me unless you mean it. I said everybody talks about how strong of a word hate is, but nobody mentions how strong a word love is and how it gets misused. I like abused. you. Well, that's fine. That's better than saying I love you. I love a lot of people I don't like. Huh. <laughs> that's that Christ-like love. Like, I love a lot of my family members. Some of them are idiots. Well, wow. <laughs> And some of them think I'm idiots. So, um, But she didn't know I smoked at the time. And I was smoking a pack of the day at mm-hmm. the time. I just hit it really well from everybody. I'd smoke on the way to church, mm-hmm. play on stage, smoke on the way home. Nobody ever knew. And it was just something I, I struggled with. And we were finally, we'd been dating four, five, six months. And... uh however long, and we're heading up to go to the movies, meet my cousin, hang out, and I rolled down the window of my 92 Tercel and lit up a cigarette. And she was, like, mm-hmm. freaked out. Because, like, like, one of the first times we ever hang out, she came to my youth group when we were in, like, 7th grade, 8th grade, whenever. You know, she, like, freaked out. She was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, yeah, I've been smoking yeah. since middle school. Like, it's – and she hated it because she had lost several family members or at least seen the, the effects that mm-hmm. smoking and tobacco had had on them. Mm-hmm. And – she got upset, and I said, look, I said, well, you know, I'm, if you want to break up with me, that's fine, but this is who I am. It's something I do. At that time, I wasn't even trying to quit. Right. Uh, that's just who I was. So, uh, yeah, it affected our relationship for a long time, and then she stuck with me, and she kept uh, encouraging me to quit in a, in a good way. She wasn't mm-hmm. nagging. She was never nagging, never mad. Um, but she prayed for me, and, and, you know, we'd be fine, and then finally one day I was done, and she loved it, but... There was a couple times where that was one of the things that she's like, yeah. she saw how it has affected me. So I, from the personal standpoint, I definitely get it. But for a state, for a government to say you can't do it, right. that's yeah. where I take issue. Because then that goes on to saying, okay, well, if you say because it affects you personally, alcohol should be banned. Cigarettes should be banned. Pot should be banned. Right. Well, well they've already got pot else, banned. And they need somebody to. else too, lost um, a kid in a mass shooting once your gun's taken away. Right, somebody yeah. else had a drunk driver hit them in your car, so they went tighter regulation on your cars, and you got to get checked every six months. At and the you have same more time, taxes and regulations. you put it to a vote, it doesn't become the government's fault. No, you know fair I mean? enough. Right. Yeah, so it becomes uh, the when you put public. it to a vote, and then it's it becomes just, the people. It becomes the people. You know what I mean? Right. So, but get it, it doesn't. It doesn't. A, it doesn't thing. say to me like if we put it to a vote and everybody votes for it, I don't look at that as the government taking things away. Right. Fair enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. That'd be your your peers and whatnot, Mm -hmm. the general population. But who enforces that? And just like Jimmy, I'm going to move this along. So just like Jimmy, I I would have to do research on it more. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a smoker's house. I am a smoker's baby. My mom smoked while she was Mm -hmm. pregnant with me. I mean, that's... What it, that's, that's my issues. So I mean, and that's it, that's you just it. Said so like straight face. That's what happened. It's what happens. So it's it's that's that was the eighties. I mean, it, yeah. there, it wasn't it wasn't anything that was talked about. It was like don't smoke when you're pregnant. Well, smoking was glorified back then. Too. Right. It was. You know, oh, you had the Marlboro Man. You had yeah. the Camel. You know. I mean, Joe that's Campbell. this is, go even before that. I mean, that's that's the the late eighties, early nineties. 
Joe Camel and I mean, and, it went on through it all, but all of it in the and movies. the Marvel Man, yeah. I mean, you got the guys in the fifties with their leather jackets and their white <laughs> shirts. You know, always so, had cigarettes. I mean, I mean, I I grew up. My parents just they smoked in the house. They smoked in the car. They cracked the window. Mm-hmm. I mean, I grew grew up all throughout that. Now you get cops going on you if you're smuggling kids. Right in the car. now, yeah. now if you drive down, children's the streets, services will come. So, for me, it's the same thing. Like, which I do take issue from, with that. I think yeah. there should be laws I, like. St- stricter laws against um, smoking with kids in the car. Oh, like absolutely. That. And while pregnant. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I hate... You, you take the choice completely out of it. Yeah. yeah. For the individuals that are... I'm with you on that. I know many people would, would not agree with us. I'm 100% with you. Um, a lot of people would go back, and, and this is... this. I'm trying to figure out how to word this. It, it's, it's kind of akin to the abortion thing. Mm-hmm. If a woman is allowed to choose to end a life in a heartbeat then why can't she decide to smoke because, quote-unquote, my body, my rules? Mm. But I'm with you on that. I think it's BS that you are subjugating other lives that are unwilling participants yeah. to deal with the side effects of this crap that is known right. to do harm. I'm with you on that. My my biggest thing, anything I, I, I try to vote this way and I try to live this way, do whatever you want as long as it does not affect somebody else or their property. Yeah. So if you want to build a big, giant pole barn property, you don't need a permit. Just build it. Now, don't be launching rockets off the roof of it at your neighbor. <laughs> well, I'm out. If you want to raise your kids right. a little Here's stricter than somebody else, but you're not beating them and you're not starving them, that's fine. As long as the kids are in good health mm. and good standing and it's a good relationship, fine. We're all going to raise our kids differently. The three of us will raise our kids differently. You right. know? But I, I, knowing you guys like I do, I'm not, I can't sit here and say, well, you're doing different than me, so you're wrong. You can't raise your kid that right. way. Yeah. As long as it does not harm somebody else or their property or their belongings, doesn't affect them, mm. do it. When you're smoking with some, with a with a life in the womb, with a, a kid in the car, whatever, I'm with you. That's bull crap because you right. are forcing something on somebody else. Right. So, and I, I grew up through all of that. And my dad quit once. My mom never quit. She when when you talked to her about, it, she's like, no, I don't want to quit. Yeah. I like it. I like to smoke. It's, I know a lot of people still like that. So my dad quit once, and then when my mom died. Mm-hmm. immediately picked it right back up. I mean, it like the day my mom died, he picked it right back up. Oh, yeah. Tried to quit like you two know, more times, and he just, at that point, he's like, I don't care yeah. to quit anymore. Like, I had been smoking for years, and the day my grandpa died, he died here in Lancaster because they botched the surgery, and I'm still pissed about it. Wow. I don't even like, when I turned on Ewing, I just like glared over the hospital. It's mm-hmm. He was my rock. like He was my hero. And uh, he died. I drove home alone because I drove out here alone. Uh, we actually drove up from... Dayton. Um, we went from the hospital to seeing him to a friend's wedding in Belfound, stayed the night, took them to Dayton to go to the airport, and then came up, and then my grandpa died a couple hours later. And so I was in my own vehicle. I drove home. I stopped at a gas station, got a single beer uh, and a pack of cigarettes. Hadn't smoked in years. Texted my uncle, my cousin, two, my two best friends, uh, and just said, uh, hey, you know, my grandpa died. And they are like, where are we meeting? They mm-hmm. One lived out, out in Amanda, one lived in Dublin. They're like, where do you need us? Mm-hmm. And we went out to Hargis Lake. We're pretty sure it's illegal to drink a beer, but screw it. We were there past dark anyway. So, And I just cracked it up and just sipped on one beer and had a cigarette. And that's the worst thing because my grandpa did 21 years in the Air Force as an EOD tech, chief master sergeant, 24 years as a Nazarene youth pastor, never once drink or smoked. And what I do when he died, right. <laughs> both of them. But I did, did one of each, so. Um, but I, I, I'm with you guys. I, I don't think I would vote to ban him mainly because the the devastating effect it would have on the economy. Right, and there's right. the freedom aspect of it too. And yeah. the freedom aspect. Check but out. for personal reasons, I would if, if it was strictly based on personal reasons, I would probably vote with you. Mm-hmm. But when I, for me, I've got to look at now. My parents never smoked or drank, mm-hmm. so it's not you know if you lost your dad to that and your parents both smoked, you know it's it's different for you guys. Mm-hmm. I can't say I know what that's like. Uh, I just know what other relatives and friends have been through my wife's family obviously many of them have been affected but mm. yeah so i don't know that's where i stand on i don't think i'd vote for it just for the freedom aspect really right, yeah. yeah and i get that i totally do and i, I do like that, you on that i do like that it's banned from a lot of the restaurants and bars and yeah. bowling alleys and stuff Which now when great. i yeah back in the early mid-2000s i'd go out to a bowling alley and be smoking and bowling everybody's yeah. smoking mm. no that was looking back thing. now i'm like that was really dumb <laughs> like it was just, it, you know there's just this Fog over the bowling alley, right. you know. Yeah. So now, I just wish the smokers would stay away from the front door, 
Like they're well, supposed, they're supposed to, to, yeah. yeah. And, move. and that's a respect thing, which I'm well, wrong with people being disrespectful regardless of what you do. <laughs> with yeah. smoker or not smoker. Because I cannot stand the smell of smoke. It's like the person that pulled out in front of me and made me jam my brakes on the way here. They literally stopped the stop sign. I was coming over the bridge of the, the bypass there. Did they have a true fit sticker on the back? And, no. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I seriously was like, please be going to the gym because I want to meet you. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, just people that I, I literally the dude looked at me like I almost I could swear we made eye contact and he just moseyed out in front of me. Of course. Nobody behind me. It's like he was trying to beat rush hour track. There's nobody behind me. It's just like people that are disrespectful drive me nuts. When somebody's smoking yeah. and blowing it around everybody else's faces, that's that's annoying. I'm with you on that. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Buckhorn Podcast. Check out TrueFit Athletics at TrueFit Athletics on Facebook, CrossFit TFA on Instagram, and IamTrueFit.com. Thanks. See you.